Hi, my name is Jim and I was retired. In my last video, I showed you a spreadsheet with a calculation that came close to approximating what you could earn on your I-bond, but it doesn't match what you'll see on Treasury Direct. A little bit off. In this video, I'm going to show you the secret formula for interest on your I-bonds. Stay tuned. My prior attempts to show you how much you could earn on your I bond each month use the IPMT function, interest payment, to use the, in, the interest rate for a period of one month to calculate an amount. But it wasn't exactly correct. In this video, I'm going to explore the secret formula the Treasury Direct actually uses to post the interest you've earned each month. As a reminder, the I bond from Treasury Direct is an inflation protected investment. It includes a fixed rate, currently zero, and an inflation factor that changes every six months based on the change in the consumer price index for urban workers. If you buy this month in June, you're going to earn 9.62% for the next six months. And then in December, you'll start earning whatever rate they announce on November 1st. So those interest rates, if you did that IPMT function, come up with a number that's not going to be matching what you'll see on a Treasury Direct account. And in this video, I'm going to go through how I've discovered the secret formula that they're currently using and how you can calculate the interest you're earning. Now, if you need a refresher on how the composite rate of that fixed rate and an inflation rate factor combine to give you the composite rate, see my prior videos. In this one, I'm going to concentrate on the formula that Treasury Direct uses. I first learned from Jennifer at Diamond Nest Egg YouTube channel. I'll put a link to her channel, as well as I did some further research and found the same discussion on Bogglehead and Reddit. And it all goes through this formula. In fact, the secret formula is published in the Federal Register, so it's not so secret. You just need to know where to find it. So first, forget trying to calculate the interest on the full value of your I-bond. That $10,000 I-bond is actually broken down into a notional $25 unit. Think of your bond as $425 I-bonds. Then the interest is rounded to the nearest cent on that $25 unit. So for a April 2022 I-bond, for instance, you're currently earning a composite rate of 7.12%. That was the last month of the old rate. The 9.62 hadn't kicked in yet, but you'll still get it for the second six months of your April I-bond. You're earning a composite rate of 7.12%. That's divided in half for the two semi-annual periods. And then it's raised to one for the first month in that, in that semi-annual series, divided by six for the six months. That gives you 15 cents of interest on that notional $25. Then that is multiplied by 400 to give you how much interest you're currently earning for that first month on your $10,000 I-bond. It's $60. But this number here is important. For the next calculation, you need to change the one to a two to give you the cumulative interest for the first two months of interest in this calculation. Note that it's not $120, it's not 60 times two, it's $116. I'm not sure 
why I'm not a math major, but so on. For three months, the calculation gives you a cumulative interest of $176. Now, when you reach the seventh month of your I-bond, you're into the second series of semi-annual calculations, and you need to roll that $356 of interest that you've earned in the first half of the year into the calculations for the next semi-annual period. This is semi-annual compounding. The $25 unit now becomes a unit of $25.89. So that's the 10,356 divided by 400. Gives you 25 89. And then that is then used to calculate the first month of the next semi-annual period at a much higher rate of 9.62%. That gives you 20 cents on that notional $25 unit. And then when you multiply that by 400, you earn $80 of interest for that first month. And so on. It repeats the process. Note, because of the rounding, it's not less than second month, the eighth month of your I-bond, it's actually more. Again, I don't know the math, I don't know why this happens, but it's due to the rounding. It's pretty easy to follow government math, right? I built this spreadsheet that I'll show you that helps with the process. Let me show you. So again, this is the April 2022 I-bond. It's earning 7.12% as the composite rate. And you're taking this value of $10,000 and divided by 400 down here, and that gives you $25. And then you're calculating the interest rate. And let me show you the formula here. I'll uh, edit formula to, sh to blow it up a little bit here. You're rounding the principal, in this case, the $25 unit, times one plus the 7.12% divided by two, because you're only doing it for a half a semi-annual, a half a year, a semi-annual portion, and raised to the power of, in this case, I'm using these figures over here to get to count out the months in the semi-annual periods. One divided by six. And then, then you back out that um, $25 unit and round it to give you how much interest you're earning for that period of time. That's the formula. Then you're timesing that by 400 to give you your 60. You've earned $60 a month in this month in that first and so far you've earned 60. And Treasury, if you go look at the end of the first month, you're gonna see zero because they're withholding interest. You're not gonna see anything due to you until you get later in the process, as I'll explain. On the second month, the calculation changes. Instead of one divided by six, it's now two divided by six. And it gives you 29 cents in interest. The cumulative interest is 116 for the two months. If you, if you subtract the first month's cumulative value from the second month's cumulative value, you find out how much interest you've actually earned in that month. And so on. It goes down to the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. There's that $356 total interest. And here, when you calculate this next month, let me just scroll this down here. In this case, as you can see down here, it's the principal plus the, the cumulative interest so far divided by 400 to give you this notional unit of 2589. And then that is used to calculate for the first month of the next period of time at a higher interest rate, the 20 cents. That gives you 80. And again, now you've added 80 to the cumulative interest so far. Over here, I have the interest 
over the life of the bond. Now, in this month here, this uh, October, you've actually earned $436 worth of interest, but if you looked on Treasury Direct, you'd only see $176. Let me explain why that happens. In October, you don't get October's interest until you finish the month. So it's gonna begin with the value that you had in September, but then it's gonna subtract the three months of interest in September, August, and July, and get you back to this number here, 176. And again, this is why you're not going to see interest show up until the fifth month. In that fifth month is when you have earned all of the interest for the first four months, allowing them to deduct the three months and show you the one month's interest. Jumping over to what if you bought in June? And again, you're going to start off at a composite rate of 9.62. Again, it's gonna divide it by the notional amount of $25. You're earning that 20 cents of interest. And then again, uh, here, the monthly interest that you've earned in the second month is 76, not 80, not 84, because it's only 10,000. It doesn't have the extra interest in the principal. So that's why it's gonna be a little bit different for the June purchase as opposed to the April purchase. But this will run, and again, it'll show you all of the interest and what Treasury Direct will show if you go look for it. Now, is this accurate? Am I doing this right? I went and looked at uh, one of the websites called ieybond.info. They've got a uh, website, website that you enter the month and year that you purchased the bond and it will show you all of the interest you've earned over the life of that bond. And again, so I wanted to see if my formulas worked. And so I took the inflation factors and the fixed rate from this chart. And again, it shows you the cumulative value of the bond. Um, and it shows uh, all of that here. And I wanted to see if that worked on my calculation. So I went and I tested it with this calculation here. There's my composite rate for the first month, notional amount $25, earned eight cents, times it by 400, it was $32, $32. Now, one clarification here, this table displays it. You don't earn that interest until the next month. So this is actually like the beginning value of each month as opposed to the interest that you earned. That $32 you really earned in April, but as of May 1st, your value is now $10,032. And again, it moves on. And see these numbers here, the, the 204, uh, the 248. And if you see my cumulative value over here, the 204, the 248. And I, I took it through actually uh, several calculations. I think I, uh, uh, I took it down to March of 2005. The cumulative value uh, is uh, of interest is $820. And let's go back to, let's go back to the I bond info chart and see what they say for April 1st, you begin with 10,820. So another validation that the formula works, it tracks with what this website is showing you, and it will track with what you see in your Treasury Direct account. This website does all the math for you. In fact, it'll even at the bottom show you that 
you've earned 4.11% over the 20 years in that table. That is sort of like the yield since issue that you'll find in the redemption tables. Slightly different calculation because this table goes all the way out to March of next year and the current redemption tables only go out to November 22. But I think the math works. I'm glad I found the secret formula and I'm glad I built a spreadsheet to understand how the formula works. It's probably not something I'll spend a lot of time updating. Uh, I'll go to Treasury Direct and look at my values, but now I understand when I expect to see within the first five years the interest due. Keep in mind, Treasury Direct will only show you the value that you're entitled to receive. So if you look in June, for instance, it's only going to show you a value through May because you're in June and you're not entitled to June until you get to July. So there will be, always will be one month behind. But in that first five years, they're also going to take three months of interest away from you as a penalty. And so you're always going to be about five months from where you started to earn the interest and what's displayed in your Treasury Direct account. And that's why I think you should keep an I bond for 16 months to get the full 12 months of interests that you've calculated that you'll receive. Wait for it to show up in your Treasury Direct account. Then if the rate is starting to go down and you have better investments, redeem and reinvest. I hope all of this helps. Keep in mind, I am not a financial professional. I have no MBA like Jennifer. I don't have any special initials after my name. So take these as entertaining ideas from one educated consumer to another. Always do your own due diligence and seek out a professional if you need one. I'll see you next time.